Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to take on a reel that's uh, it's got a good following to it. It's the Shakespeare Tidewater 30L. This reel was probably made 15 years ago or so. I can recall back around 10 years ago I purchased an inventory of parts reels but basically made up of broken uh, Tidewater 30Ls. It was at the end of its uh, manufacturing run. They seem to be returns to uh, stores and uh, you know for one reason or another they were broken and I got the opportunity to buy about 30 or 40 of them and make about 15 or 20 of them whole by swapping out the missing pieces and parts. Well today we've got one we have a broken uh, line drive going on here. The guide is out of the post. The worm gear is not in the side plate here. The reel doesn't turn because something is obstructing. Well, it's turning now. Before it wasn't turning, something was obstructing it. So we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how to tune it up. I have a couple of baskets of parts here from that 10-year-old uh, experience. Hopefully somewhere in there, if this needs a piece of part, we'll be able to find one and we'll be able to get this one fishing again. So I start by taking off the exterior pieces. And as I do that, I'd like to thank our first responders and essential personnel for all that they've been doing during the pandemic to keep us safe and out of harm's way. The first responders, the frontline employees, all the people in the fire and rescue and medical fields and all of the supply chain folks, your efforts truly are appreciated. Thank you for all you've done. We're not out of the woods yet, folks, so please stay safe and stay healthy and uh, be aware of what's going on out there. All right, so I've taken off the, uh, the little collar that uh, holds the nut secure for the handle. I'm going to pull that handle nut off now. i will take that handle off. One of the weak points I found in this reel is that this is a plastic star adjuster, and uh, whether they get dropped on the low end or whether they get over-tightened or whatever, these pieces of the arms of that adjuster tend to snap off. Well, newsflash, there's no parts available for this reel. So uh, if you have a broken part uh, and uh, it happens to be a star adjuster or something, you're just kind of out of luck at this point. Um, I think, although I could be wrong, this reel was made before the uh, the purchase of Shakespeare by Pure Fishing, but I could be wrong. Okay, so I'm just going to mop up a little bit on the table. I finally have some grease there, probably from a prior uh, reel that I was working on. We're going to remove the star adjuster now. We want to get this side plate off and we want to find out what's going on in there. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. If you're taking pictures, that way you know the sequence of the pieces and parts you took off so that when you go to reinstall you'll uh, be able to find them. This reel wasn't a lightweight. You have a, you have a bearing on this reel. Uh, then you have a big old brass collar here as well. But uh, you have a couple of bearings in this reel. It's not uh, just your bushing reel. And uh, overall it's nicely made. I've opened up a lot of Okuma reels lately. The Okuma Classic in particular but also the Mag Pro. And it shares the design inside. So this is kind of interesting in that uh, the uh, real uh, manufacturer, Okuma, is not associated with Shakespeare in any way. They're competitors. Now, interestingly enough, this reel, the 30L, was made in Taiwan. And that's where Okuma makes their reels. So they probably have gotten to some uh, jobber plant out there that uh, uh, has uh, stock designs and uh, they decided between them that they were going to uh, both use that same internal design with different exteriors. I'm putting my uh, screws on the desk because I want to make sure that they're the same size and they're not. The ones that are in these crossbars are shorter screws than the ones that are in the case. So if that follows true now, this one should be a long screw. And this one should be a short screw. And we would have one more here to do as well. So I'm trying to figure out in my mind, it's been a while since I've worked on one of these. As I mentioned, I kind of got these in a, in a wholesale lot a long time ago. And along the way, some viewers have sent in some, some of these to be repaired. But I'm just trying to remember how these are linked up here. All right, I'm just kind of working that out. Yep, so the crossbars, when you go to reinstall, the crossbars have those two short screws here and here. The longer screws uh, go on the other side. 
Once those are done, I'm going to put those into a parts tray. I keep all my pieces and parts in one, just so that I know where to find them when it's time to reinstall. When you've got the screws out, this should pull off. This is, these are a little hard because of the way that they're set up. Okay, we've got, this is the, the hold down, and it looks like, I'm not sure if that's snapped or not. We're going to have to go back and find that out. But that goes in here as a collar for your line guide. That's probably why this is floating as much as it is. And uh, I'm just curious. I'm seeing that there's a tag here. It looks like that's probably snapped off. So we know that this piece and part is not available any longer. I think the solution on this one, since this is riveted down here, I think the solution on this one, I think it's riveted down. Yep, nope, we have some flexibility. I think what we're going to do on this is we're going to take this piece. We're going to try and find some uh, super glue or crazy glue. It looks like it's a clean snap. We'll go this way, I think. And we're going to try and see if the magic of super glue can make this one whole. So I'm going to stop the video here for a moment. We're going to see if we can do that. And I'm going to bet just with that piece alone, if we can load this back in, I think that's going to solve this issue. We pushed it right back in here. Let's turn the spool. Oh, we don't have the, the wind gear driving here. Let's grab that. Oh, we got more of an issue than that. So let's, let's solve one of these at a time. We're going to try and grab this, use the crazy glue on it make this piece whole and uh, and solve one issue at a time here. I'm going to turn this off while we do the super gluing and we'll be right back. So just as I was about to grab the super glue and see if we couldn't do a bush fix, I went to the parts trays that I have and I actually found that we have the trim ring with the piece in place and it's a full piece. So the other one might have been a little bit more uh, precarious in terms of trying to load it in there. So we're going to use this one. We're just simply going to replace this side plate with the other. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll use the, the uh, pole or line guide uh, bushing there and the whole side plate in uh, general off the other reel. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way. There's no guarantee that the super glues will hold, although I think we probably could have done a, a pretty good job with that one there. But uh, in this case, I think we're much better off if we simply uh, swap these out. So we'll just line these up, get those back in. Simple changeover. And we just need to, to mount, make sure that the line guide gets in properly. Uh, a little juggling act here. We'll go over to the other side, find out what's, uh, what's causing the issue there. Okay, so we have the line guide in, we have that little mount where it should be in this little indentation here. I'm kind of thinking at the moment now that the, the uh, metal drive on the other side is not uh, attached. And we're going to deal with that next. And then we'll show you how to rebuild the gear section of this reel. The, um, the reel came in because the line guide wasn't working, but there's no sense uh, not doing the entire tune-up at this point. It just, uh, why, why take the reel, make it all the way open, and then not, uh, not service it? Okay. That's the internal piece. Put my glue to the side. I'm going to take those two broken parts to the side. Take the old trim ring to the side. Let's come over here and find out what's going on on this side then. I'm thinking that the gear for the worm drive is not on there. That's easy enough to understand. It's something that can pop out very easily if the line guy gets pushed through the case like it did on the other side. Again, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm laying the screws down on my table, 
If any screw is a different size, I'm going to go ahead and, and make sure that I identify which side of the reel that came from. So if you're liking this video, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. If you do subscribe, I'm going to ask you to hit the notification button. That way you'll see all of the episodes that I post. I post all kinds of reels. I post bait casters, spinning reels, salt water reels, level line reels, lever drag reels, trolling reels, pretty much everything. And uh, if you're interested in the art of reel repair or just want to learn more about fishing reels, then uh, this is a good channel to watch. I say that humbly. And uh, if you like it, uh, please subscribe. If you have a question about this reel or any reel in particular, and you uh, maybe you're stuck repairing a reel or something, uh, if you leave that question uh, with me, then we'll try and get you an answer to that. All right, here's what happened. That metal uh, drive gear for the worm is off. I suspect that happened because all that I got pulled through. This is a little tie down that holds the assembly in place. So let's go see if we can't get all of this back the right way now. Again, it's a little bit of a balancing act because of the way that the everything is set up here. Okay, once you have this seated through here, you have that little plastic bushing that holds this side. You have the forks from that uh, other bushing on this side going into the indentation and the line guide. You have the line guide into the groove. Uh, then you can put your worm drive gear on. And then this hooks over the one side under the plastic bushing and onto the stud here as a clip to hold that assembly together there. So we should be good on this side now. I think that's all we need to do. What we'll do, because we have the case open here, is we'll put a little bit of, of grease into the bushing that's going to hold the spool on the back end. And if we like, we can put a little bit of grease onto the, the teeth here. Uh, not that important there. Okay. We're going to line this up and put the case back on. And this is not an easy task here because the, the way to get this case on, unfortunately, is that these two studs on this side are hanging out. So you really can't put it down to get the leverage you need to, uh, to meld the cases together. And in the meantime, we're trying to mesh the worm drive gear. I think I did that there. Okay, so we're just tightening up now the uh, screws. And notice I have one in the wrong location here, so that one's coming out. That one belongs in the real seat. Oh, that belongs right where it was. I had a camera problem here, and that uh, problem has led to uh, me trying to pick this up midstream. All right, let's put this uh, small screw back in here in the, in the crossbar. We had the two long screws, one of which I failed to identify before. They belong in the real seats. So this would be the other for the real seat. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put the other side ones in. We'll check Make sure that we have our worm gear operating and then we'll go over and we'll do the gear side of this. I think you'll be surprised on the gear side. It's a very nicely made reel. It's durable and uh, it's got a pretty good gear ratio for uh, the, the size of the reel. So um, they did come out with a later version of this which was actually a high speed model and uh, they went from the plastic to the graphite frames. Uh, and then the reel kind of got discontinued. So I know the ones that I rebuilt, a lot of them are still being fished today. So uh, it's a credit to uh, the endurance of this particular reel. And it's a reason why a lot of people like it. Okay, I got the screws back in. Let's go ahead and turn this and make sure that the worm and the line guide is working. And it is. So that was the, the core issue why this reel came in. I'm just checking the back spool here. These are the, the uh, clicker and this is the spool drive. I want to make sure that when I turn the spool, I've got the line guide working, which I do. So we're going to set that aside for a moment. Let's come back here. We started with this. Let's finish with this. 
There's three small screws and a screw that holds the main gear on. There's also a uh, C-clip, but I do not believe you need to remove that C-clip up top there. We'll find out in a moment. Again, it's been a while. Take the three screws out. And you might want to take the main gear screw out now. If it moves on you, grab the handle. Seat the handle there so that you can hold the main gear. And then remove the screw for the main gear. Good place to take pictures again. There's a bushing that uh, sits here on this sleeve. Kind of an extended washer. So you want to know about that. And let's take that last small screw out. And just looking at it right now, you do not need to remove the C-clip up top here. I didn't think you did, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay. These are going to go into a separate corner of my parts tray. Now I can remove the back plate or the bridge plate simply by picking up. And now you'll see how you're going to reinstall this. Here's your anti-reverse dog. It's got a little pivot that's held in by the bridge. Here's your main gear. This is your jack, your yoke, and your pinion gear. I'm going to take the jack off next. Small screw. And again, if you have an Okuma Classic, you might as well just go ahead and, and use this video as the service reference point because it's the same. I'm going to pull our jack, pull our pinion gear. There's a stud holding that anti-reverse dog on. If you just take a um, little needle nose pliers or something, you can work that off. And you can just get that out of the way. You don't need to do too much here. You don't have to take the spring off to do the rest of the service there. I'm going to put that in the tray. I'm going to leave that dog attached. A yoke spring remains on here. This is the other yoke spring. You can pull those off if you like. They are springs, careful, they will shoot. And now we can push that whole main gear assembly up and out. That's what I was saying before, we have a big brass bushing on there. We're going to do that so that we can clean the reel. I'm going to use my cotton swab. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave them in the comments section, I'll be happy to try and answer them for you. It doesn't have to be on this reel. Maybe you're working on a reel and you're stuck. Maybe you're curious about how a reel was designed or uh, anything in between there. I'll uh, try and do my best to answer that for you. Okay, we have the bronze bushing, two tension washers, and two face washers there. I'm going to take the main plate off because the drag washers are actually facing the bottom in this case. I'm going to pull the first one. And these are hard washers, so you don't need to do anything here other than check to make sure they're not broken or torn. And these, these are fine. So these do not need to be flexible. You don't need to check. You don't need to, to bang them. And actually, you might snap them because they're hard washers. The setup on these is that you have two keyed washers and you have a pair of um, eared washers there so we're going to run it the keyed washer the hard washer this came out as a pair it's going back in as a pair these are thinner they need to fit in the slots Use my pick for that, make sure that they're properly seated. This one at a time makes it better. And grab the last hard washer, the last keyed washer. And interestingly enough, as I mentioned, this stack kind of goes reverse of what we would traditionally think is the way that those washers are going to go on. Typically they're pressed in from this side. I kept this stack the same. We have another hard washer on this side. We have a keyed washer. 
And then these are not flat washers. Don't try to flatten them out. These are concave. They can uh, they attribute um, tension on the star adjuster based on how you put these back in. I'm putting them back in the way that they were originally set. All right, we can put the main gear back in at this point. After we, uh, I'll put a little bit of grease onto the main gear. You want to check the teeth on the main gear. You want to make sure that they're all symmetrical, that they're not cracked or chipped or worn. The main gear was not the issue when this one came in. Remember, it was the line drive. All right, you can put the brass bushing on top. And if you like, and I find that it's a benefit, just come on back in, put the, the two small washers on, the bearing on, and the star adjuster. That's going to hold the main gear in place. I've found over time with experience that if you don't do that, this is going to pop in and out. And it's pretty difficult to, uh, to hold that, trying to mount the, uh, the anti-reverse dog and keep everything in sync. When you do that, then you can grab the pivot point here for the main, uh, for the dog. So that's how you sit with the anti-reverse dog. And be careful now because there's still some play in this main gear. And uh, what you're going to do with this is you're just going to try and keep it from banging around too much while you go to load the... Uh, pinning gear, yoke, and jack assemblies. These are where your springs go. Try and stand it up like that. I'm going to do the same thing here with the pinion gear. Clean it off. Check the teeth. Make sure that they're uniform. That they're not bent, chipped, or cracked. Grab the brush with the grease on it. I'm using pen precision real grease. Clean out the, uh, the yoke. And again, these are pretty high quality parts. I'm not sure if this is a stainless yoke or not, but I rarely see these rusted. And I know it's not brass. So there's a chance that both of these are stainless skiers. Okay, we're going to do one more thing here. We're going to clean this jack while we're at it. This is, there's nothing hard or anything dried on there, so you just simply need to wipe it off with a paper towel. All right then, again, from the assembly standpoint, go get that pinion gear. Set it over the two studs that support it. Jack is next. You want to make sure that you're over the stud for the screw. And then this little screw here gets to wreak havoc with us. I'll use some glue to hold it to get me started here. I'll go ahead and put that back on. Now you might need to switch to a micro screwdriver if you're not grabbing your teeth. This one driver I have here has a very good point for a, uh, for a Phillips head and it is holding. Okay, that's the assembly here. Straightening that up. Next up then is the bridge. So you need to make sure as you're doing this that that anti-reverse dog is in the groove. If you leave it behind, if you let it lay up on top of this, you won't be able to seat the bridge. If it gets behind this shaft, which is why we put that star adjuster on, if it gets behind the shaft, you won't uh, have a proper, properly operating reel either. The three screws go here. The hole in the middle is going to hold that little stud for the uh, anti-reverse. I'm just going to try and lay it down. See if we can't get this early on. I did mention before that you have a brass bushing here for the main gear. I like the sound of a snap like that. I'm going to put that main gear screw in first, at least get it started. That way I'm know, I know I'm going to be holding that anti-reverse assembly. That's the uh, the one little trick on this reel is you got to take the main gear off and you've got to make sure that you have that anti-reverse set properly on the reinstall. Other than that, it's a fairly straightforward reel. I'm going to grab one of the 
bridge screws and I'm going to choose the one by that dog again because that's the one if you're going to have a problem with the reel it's going to be with this anti-reverse uh, dog there so let's get that screw in first we can come over the other side put those other two in this is the benefit of a parts tray the parts tray lets you just uh, see what you got in there know what you need to do what's left to be installed and uh, if you've made a mistake somewhere, if you've got uh, the parts laying around, then you want to uh, back up and go and reinstall as, uh, as required. Okay, last one of these. And at this point, we should be able to do a test, make sure that the anti-reverse and everything is working. It is. I have a little question as to whether these washers, I can do this now, whether these little tension washers belong under the bearing or on top of it. And as I mentioned, take pictures. I'm not certain. It's been quite some time since I've worked on this wheel. I'm going to stop the video at some point. I'm going to go look and just verify that. But that's why you take pictures along the way. We're going to use a rod and reel cleaner just to get rid of all the grease and grime and junk on this before we put it any further. And you'll notice I was able to take the star adjuster out now that I have the main gear attached to the assembly in the back there and holding that uh, anti-reverse dog in play. I'm using a pen rod and reel cleaner for this. It does a nice job. It's a, a cleaner uh, and a degreaser and a little bit of a polish in between there. And it does shine these, uh, these reels up pretty nicely. There's I think that's UV fade there as opposed to grease. Yeah, that's uh, something that's just got that. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this piece back onto the frame because that's the next part. We're going to put a little bit of grease onto the shaft of the spool. Get the spool loaded in. Align the studs here so that we can get those into the reel properly. And these are tight fitting studs, so you'll, uh, you'll need to do a little bit of work with that. Let's get the screws in now. Remember the long screws go into the side plates. Short screws go into the crossbars. And there's five of these. There's three longs and two shorts. And we saw when we went to take that side plate off to swap that, that the, uh, the real seat on this side is actually held in by two small Phillips head screws. Okay, so. <laughs> I just had a battery failure and I apologize, but it actually gave me an opportunity to go back because I had a question on those two uh, spacer washers. Did they go below or above the bearing? It turns out that they go above the bearing because I looked at the, at the pictures that I had uh, on the video and uh, now we got it right without worry. I put those two on, I took my glove off because I had to go work the camera to restore the, the replacement battery and all. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on now, last of the screws, and uh, we will be able to test this reel and we'll be able to get it going fishing again. So I think I was starting to say if you have a reel that needs to be repaired and uh, you're not up for doing it yourself, if you contact me on, by email on the business card that follows, I will be happy to provide you with that reel repair information. Okay, this is the way it came out, so let's make sure this is the way it goes back on. Again, one of the weak points of this reel is this uh, um, star adjuster being plastic. All right, handle. And the nut. So what have we learned? Sometimes there's some pieces of parts that you don't expect to be the broken part that um, contributes to the real failure. In this case, it was kind of an oddball one. It was that little tie-down bushing. 
that uh, is holding the uh, um, line guide in place, the line guide worm drive gear. All right, I just was in my parts tray and proved once again the value of a parts tray because I looked in there and a little tension washer that goes underneath the handle is still sitting in there. So I can't emphasize enough, use a parts tray, keep track of where your pieces and parts are and uh, that way you know that when that parts tray is empty, your job is done. All right. In a moment, we'll be able to test. We'll be able to get this reel out there fishing again. And I think he got the last of the, uh, the bushing pieces assemblies that I had in my parts tray from 10 years ago. So there you go. All right. Just to tie down screws, all that remains between us and a test. Okay, give it a spin, make sure that that line guide is driving. There you go. So there you go. Let's make sure that we have the free spool. We do. Make sure that the drags that uh, we put in place are holding. They need to be tightened a little bit. Plenty of. There we go. We're tight on the drags. Got a one gear that's driving the line guide, which is what the problem came in for. Got a spinning wheel here with a bearing on this side, which is nice. And this has an automatic trip feature. I just kind of happen to do it that way, but there is an auto trip feature. There is a stud under here when it locks. We're locked now. We can just drive through and it will push that back. So that's it. That's the Tidewater 30L. Came in with a line, uh, line guide issue. We were able to find a uh, an older side plate that uh, had that piece in there so we did the exchange on that we saved ourselves the uh, the trial and error of possibly or possibly not crazy gluing this little piece here and uh, the reel can go fishing again it's got a second chance so i hope you've enjoyed it please stay safe stay well stay fishing and stay watching this is dennis with second chance tackle have a great day